Embark on a family adventure like no other as you journey to Iceland, the land of fire and ice, a paradise for both young and old travelers. With its magical landscapes, vibrant culture, and endless opportunities for exploration, Iceland isn't just a destination, it's an open air classroom where every step ignites curiosity and wonder, sparking a thirst for knowledge that will last a lifetime. What's up unconventionalists, I'm Cassidy, welcome back. Our family is traveling to Iceland for the next two weeks. Scott, myself, and our two boys, Atlas and Isle, who are four and six right now. We're attempting to cover the entire ring road under the midnight sun, meaning there is almost 24 hours of daylight this time of year. We're choosing to travel to Iceland in July, which is peak season for tourism, but also peak season for temperature. With that being said, it didn't get above 55 degrees Fahrenheit the entire time. We traveled to Iceland from Denver on an Iceland air flight. It took less than seven and a half hours, and for four tickets, it set us back about $1,200. Hemp seats. We got the hemp seats. It's go time. Today is the big day. We're driving four hours to Denver and then flying seven hours and 15 minutes overnight to Iceland. We're gonna spend the first 10 nights camping and we're doing this all with our six and our four and a half year olds. So our kids will be carrying all their own weight today, all their own clothes on their backs. And I'm so proud of them and I'm so excited right now. Okay, I'm a little anxious. Where are we going? Iceland. 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 Road trip! Iceland! Iceland! Love you! Love you! You can, you can! Ready? Getting to Iceland was easy, but now the real adventure begins. Once we landed at the Keflavik International Airport, we waited for the Go Camper shuttle to pick us up and take us over to their rental counter, which is about seven minutes away from the airport. Go Campers has a wide variety of vehicles you can choose from for your Iceland road trip experience, but we selected a four-wheel drive Jeep Wrangler Hybrid with a four-person rooftop tent. We chose a four-wheel drive because we had read online in advance that if you wanted to go on the F-roads or in the highlands, you needed to have four-wheel drive, and we really wanted to do that. But truth be told, we didn't have that much time to do that. We went into the highlands like twice on the entire trip. It was very time consuming. I would love to go back to Iceland and see more of the highlands, but we had 10 days to do the whole ring road, and in that amount of time, especially with two kids who don't want to sit in the car more than necessary, it was a little bit unreasonable to think we were gonna spend even more time driving into the highlands. That's something to be considered because two-wheel drive rentals are significantly cheaper in Iceland than four-wheel drive rentals. The little Wi-Fi router that Go Campers rented to us worked for the entire island. There was almost no dead zones and having a little Wi-Fi router allowed us to use Google Maps everywhere. Camping in Iceland is a little bit different than camping in the USA. You shouldn't have any issue getting a campsite anywhere, but hardly any campgrounds take reservations in advance. So a lot of the campgrounds didn't have like campsites like you have in the US where you get your own spot and it's numbered. A lot of them were just find a spot where you can park and that's your spot. Go Campers gave us this awesome website to find campgrounds with and I'll leave that link in the description below. Over 200 campgrounds in Iceland, there's tons to choose from and they're all along the ring road you should have no issue finding a campsite. There's something you can buy called the Icelandic camping car for $200 and it's supposed to get you into a bunch of campgrounds without having to pay the nightly fee. However, we didn't find in our 10 nights of camping in Iceland, there was not one place we stayed that accepted the Icelandic camping car. Um, so we would recommend not getting that. It's just few and far in between that take it. It's worth just taking the risk and paying the nightly. The nightly is usually ranges from like free to 20, 25 bucks a night. Yes, there were some campgrounds where we didn't have to pay and then some of the more expensive ones, 25 bucks a night. So I would just avoid the Icelandic camping card altogether if I were you. Well, campers gave us these little nifty discount cards for two of the different gas station chains within the country. So we were able to save like 10% on gas, which was really helpful because gas is excruciatingly expensive in Iceland. We were slightly unprepared for how cold it was gonna be. But that allowed us to get some sweet souvenirs, Icelandic tweed sweaters, which are very popular in Iceland and in my opinion, the best souvenir you can get there. With that being said, make sure you have plenty of warm things, even in the summer. Before we get to the itinerary, I'd like to point out that we had two weeks to see Iceland. We planned 10 days camping and doing the entire ring road and then three nights at the end in the capital of Reykjavik. Without further ado, let's get into the 14 day itinerary and the highlights of our trip to Iceland. We made it to Iceland! Woohoo! We're in our first electric Jeep. It's electric? It's, uh, it has hybrid, electric, and e-save mode on a Jeep. On our first day in Iceland, after we picked up the Jeep from Go Campers, we headed out on our adventure. We decided to do the trip counterclockwise, starting on the Ray Canis Peninsula. Please excuse my pronunciation in this video. I'm gonna do the best I can, but I will be sure to leave the words on the screen as well, so you can write them down or add them to your trip itinerary. The Ray Canis Peninsula is out where the airport is, so it's really convenient to start your trip there. First stop after the grocery store aisle, where are we? 
Iceland, going to the bakery. Iceland, going to the bakery. <laughs> Vegan donuts. Maybe that's why I wanted to come here. Look how many amazing treats there are. Here's yours. I'm gonna eat the chocolate yeah, app today. Chocolate's <laughs> best. Mommy's got a donut. Ooh, we got one of these things. What's this thing? Yeah. Oh, I'm gonna eat that too. Wait, how many treats are you eating? We got a couple of really good things. If you are plant-based, Iceland is a super friendly place for you to travel. It's super vegan friendly. There's a lot of vegans in Iceland. You're so tired. I'm not! I'm not! I'm so tired! He's so tired he can't even talk to us. He's just yelling. We gotta put him to bed. No! Yeah, these like giant cracks and fissures in the ground they think are from like a like volcanic event. The Brim Brimketo Lava Rock Pool. Catch a lava rock pool. Uh, Guys, it's not that old. Stay holding on to your buddy. Now we're at the Gunnivor Hot Spring, which you don't swim in, you just look at it. But the steam is insane. We have stop at the bridge between two continents where you can walk across from the North American plate to the Eurasia plate and back again. It's pretty cool to see a little geology lesson for the kid. Two continents! We're gonna get some basalt sand all over you! We're wrapping up the day at Blue Lagoon Hot Springs. It's been a long travel day. We gotta wake him up because we're at the Blue Lagoon. It's time to go swim in. You do have to make a reservation in advance. They've got tons of time slots. Blue Lagoon is one of those places that we have all heard of and we all wonder, does it really live up to the hype? Yes, it lives up to the hype. And the hot springs. We're at the Blue Lagoon in Iceland, babe. This is it. It's going to. It's expensive, but for us, it was worth the money. Mom, where are you? Jimmy, it's deep. deep? <laughs> Give you the silica mud masks in there. And this was a place I had wanted to visit for such a long time. It was really satisfying to make it there on night one in Iceland. campsite for the night. The following day we had a tour booked really early for the Silver Fissure so we wanted to get close to there for camping for the night so we wouldn't have to get up too early the following morning. It's so windy. We ended up camping at Ulfhotvatten. Say good night. Good night. I'm tree climbing. Good night tree climber. Day one down. We're off to bed for our first night in the rooftop tent. Wish us luck. We will check in tomorrow and let you know how it goes. How'd you sleep guys? Good. Good. First night success. Day two started with dad hopping on a snorkel tour with Adventure Vikings in the Silfra Fissure. We woke up by our campsite. It was a great night camping. It was not cold. We had plenty of uh, warm things, four sleeping bags, two giant comforters. We had our silk liners to sleep in, but it was windy. It was a little bit loud from the wind. They don't let kids under 10 do this tour, so we're gonna explore the natural phenomenons nearby in the meantime. Dry suits on. We're gonna be warm in there. Cold water, thank you. It's gonna be chilly, but I'm really excited. Big old glacier on the back of that thing. Water's gonna percolate through the basaltic uh, volcanic rock and then find its way into the silfra. Silfra means silver in Icelandic. Almost time. Fins are on. The only place in the world where you can snorkel between two tectonic plates. It's also known as some of the clearest water in the entire world. We're about to jump into the ice water. <laughs> Crazy clear. This excursion is not for the faint of heart. The water averages between 35 to 39 degrees Fahrenheit.
The kids and I spent the time exploring the national park while he was on his snorkel tour. Seeing Velier National Park. It's pretty cool, it's beautiful. If you're not doing the snorkel tour, we probably wouldn't have stopped at this national park. I can barely feel my lips. Is he the goodest sleeper? I love you! The next stop for us along the Golden Circle was Geyser. It's like Yellowstone. Mud pots and hot springs. This is a geothermal hot pot area. It's got several geysers, mud pots, hot springs. It reminds us a lot of Yellowstone. This geyser doesn't blow on time. We're leaving a Google Daddy. reveal. Daddy. It's going to be so upset. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> That was sick. Getting stinky up in this here. Um, dorm interruptions are rare. Uh, we love this stop. We spent a lot of time here. The lupines were looming all over the place and it was just beautiful. This is a really fun stop with kids because they can see a lot of the exciting geothermal activity up close and personal. Highly, highly recommend. This whole field is filled with them. The next stop on the Golden Circle was Gullfoss Waterfall. Holy moly, you guys. This place is awesome. We were pretty exhausted from our time at Geyser, so we just popped out briefly, took in the views of the waterfall, and got back on the road. We made it to Gullfoss Falls! We stopped in this like random little town of Flu Fluori. Polymer joints. These are the natural shape of the calmer joints that break down. It's crazy that they just recycle them into. Mm. We've been on the Golden Circle today, seeing the geyser, seeing the waterfalls at Gullfoss Falls, and the kids were saying, we always do stuff mommy and daddy want to do, but we don't do stuff we want to do. So we saw this awesome, kid-friendly looking thing on the side of the road. We had to stop. So let's go see what this is all about. We quickly learned how common these like big blob things are all across Iceland. <laughs> Show me what you got. <laughs> you can't get me. Oh, okay. Then it was time to see some of the most epic waterfalls in the country. If you didn't already know, Iceland is home to more than 10,000 waterfalls. But the south side of the island, the Golden Circle area, you know, the bottom of the Golden Circle and the beginning of kind of the south end of the island is really famous for its waterfalls, really well known, and it's probably because it's close to the airport, but these did not disappoint. The first waterfall that we stopped at, we ended up soaking ourselves because there was so much mist. The boys were smart, wore rain jackets, but I wore a sweatshirt, and that was a stupid idea. The mist from the waterfall like shook, lets you see a rainbow with the sunlight and it is touristy but it was just gorgeous and perfect. Selja Landfoss. Go, go, go guys! Go fella dad! Don't slip! We ended day two setting up camp at what is probably the most beautiful place we have ever camped in our entire lives. <laughs> oh my gosh, what a campsite. Just arrived at camp for the night, night two, and I don't think I've ever seen a more beautiful campsite in my life than at the Skogafoss Waterfall. Skogafoss, a 200 foot waterfall, is a very popular spot for travelers, but not everyone realizes there's actually a campground there. You can camp right at the base of this insane waterfall. We can see the waterfall from our tent. Also, by camping there, instead of just popping by on the day trip, you have the opportunity to see it with much fewer people late at night than you would during the middle of the day. And that's the end of day two in Iceland. Good night, Skogafoss. I'm down. Day three might have been our favorite day of the entire trip. Waking up at Skagafoss, most beautiful campsite, to get everything out of the rooftop tent and get it all the way down. It took about less than 15 minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Did not waste any time there in the morning. We were on a mission because we had to make it like three hours down the coast for our 1 p.m. tour that day. On the road again. Oh man, my hair is so wet, I need to dry it. <laughs> That's a glacier back there. First glacier. 
Our first stop along the way was the Solheim Jokel Glacier. Those are some icebergs floating in the water. Whoa! And this was the first time we had seen floating icebergs, so that was really cool. There were icebergs in the water, and we could see the glacier across the water there. It was a brief stop. We ran out as fast as we could from the parking lot, saw it, and got back on the road. Headed into the town of Vic, got some coffee, and a quick breakfast at School Beans Cafe, literally a coffee shop inside a school bus. Beans, School Beans. Thanks, Johnny. Good morning. <laughs> good morning. This is like good morning. Relax. Ooh, beautiful. Cheers. If you stop at School Beans in Vic, you definitely need to get a mocha. It is their specialty or any of the stuff with chocolate. It is so good. Then we just hustled our way up because we had a tour booked on an amphibious boat at the Jokul Sarlon Glacier Lagoon. We arrived at the Iceberg Lagoon for our amphibian boat tour. The amphibian boat tour was the only one that allowed kids of our kids age on it. Now I'm not even joking you, this might have been my favorite experience of the entire trip and one of my like top five favorite travel experiences of all time. They pick you up on the land, the boat has wheels on it and then it goes into, straight to the water. A little boat will come up, chip off a little bit of iceberg for you, like let everyone lick it. We learned a ton about glaciers in here. Very, very fun stop. Glacier of Lakes. This one is the second biggest glacier in volume Europe, has 8,000 square kilometers, and it recovers 9% of Iceland. Be careful, it's heavy. <laughs> nice. Oh, if you have any questions, let me know. Heavy. I will. Ash. 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 That's ash. Volcanic ash. We have volcanic ash falling on us right now. Oh, really? Topographic dog with a giant aisle. <laughs> da Daddy, I, I wanna take a video. Topographic log. Right across the street from the glacial lagoon is the famous Diamond Beach. So the famous Diamond Beach in Iceland is where the iceberg lagoon we were just at feeds into the ocean. And there's some icebergs flowing in right now. Wait, oh, wait. But we haven't seen any washed up on the beach yet. What'd you find? I found you found one on the beach? Nice dagger. There he is! Look at it, he's out there! We also spotted a seal on this beach. It was our first kind of big wildlife sighting on the trip, so that was really exciting. Hey, yes. head out there is a watch seal. Watch out, watch out, step back, step back. Watch out, watch out, watch out! Tide's coming up, tide's Daddy, coming up! Giant ice! Giant ice! Whoa! Look at this bird carcass. It's a unique looking one though, because you can see it really see its face. That's, that's a sneaker. Yeah! Let's go this way. No, 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 we're not gonna get our feet wet, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna get close to it. Feeding the beast. Yeah, yeah, they die at the end. Quick pee break, quick run up the hill break, stretch those legs. We got a local recommendation to try this restaurant called Pacus. Pacus in the town of Hoffen. So when we made it there, of course we had to stop and go there and visit. Hoffen. Like we got a local chips. local recommendation for the Pacus restaurant in Hoffen, so we're excited to check it out. My fall. I won my fall. <laughs> How's the lamb, Dad? Ooh, I've never liked lamb that much. I've had lamb most of my life. I haven't had it for the last couple of years. 
No question, best lamb I've ever had in my whole life. Least gamey flavored. I don't know. I don't know how to describe it. Like not gamey like a lamb. Driving up the eastern coast. Baby season. The baby baby season. What's that feel like? It's very soft. I don't know what this is. It's very soft. Pulled over on the side of the road just to pick one. We continued up the coast just a tiny bit further to the charming town of Dejupivogar, where we set up camp for the night. Look at we found another one of these bouncy blobs. We're in like south southeastern Iceland now in a town I surely can't pronounce, but it's cute and they have a kids blob and we found a little campground, so we're gonna call it home for the night. We're gonna try if something's open. It's 9.21 p.m. but it never gets dark here, so we went for a walk after we set up camp. Thank you. Dad, is that an actual fruit right there? Day four was off to a great start because we finally got to take a shower. We were overdue for a slow morning at this point. We had just like been pounding it since we arrived in Iceland, so we took it kind of easy this morning. We got a slow breakfast, went to the playground, the kids jumped on the blob. Woo! <laughs> 1.40 p.m. and we just got on the road. You're gonna scare them out. Reindeer. We saw a bunch of cars pulled over on the side of the road and we're like, what are they looking at? And then we realized it was a flock of reindeer. I called it a flock, so I'm calling it a flock, but I think it's actually a herd. Here only live in the eastern region. I didn't get a good like camera shot of them because the first rule of spotting wildlife is never to get too close. Stopping at Petra's stone collection on the east coast. Well, I wouldn't say this is a must stop, but if you're driving the ring road, it's geographically located in a nice spot to like break up the drive anyways. And it's a pretty fun little quirky stop. There was like an old lady who collected rocks all her life and made this amazing collection at her and they turned her old little house into the museum. And it's a great way to learn about the local geology. So when they're in little pieces that are in like hairs in a direction like that, it's called acicular. Say acicular. Acicular. And then, hold on. And then right, it comes from this middle point all the way out in all these directions and that's called radiating. Radiating. So this is a radiating acicular specimen. Always look at the local rocks, don't we, Dad? I love rock. When we got a little bit further up the east side of the island, we detoured off the ring road because we saw this cute little town online that we wanted to visit called Sadis Fjorder. Eastern Iceland. Eastern Iceland. Yo. And although it's a little bit off the beaten path, we'd say it's a must see. Sea wolf. That little island out there, guys. Can we go on it? Pretty cool. It's, well, it's an island, so how would we get there? Put on the back. Hey, Mom! <laughs> what is this thing? Uh oh. Wow! I think it's not meant for grown ups. If you have the time and you can justify it, I think it's like a 30 minute down and 30 minute back up detour, so an extra hour of driving. But the town is so cute and it's beautiful driving into. If you have the time, definitely check it out. We drove back up to the ring road and stopped at the main town in the area, the main town of East Iceland, which is Egolstadstauder. Although we have two weeks here in Iceland, which feels like a lot, especially when you're camping with two little kids, it's really not enough time to see it all. Like there is so much stuff here and there's a lot of hikes, lots of waterfalls, lots of hot springs and like, you need a lot of time and we don't move that quickly with our kids. We went to three playgrounds today and that was just the speed of what our family needed to do today. So we are enjoying it, we are embracing it and we will see you tomorrow for day five. Day five, feels especially cold this morning, so we hustled in the car. We started off day five in the absolute best way possible. We haven't been in as many hot
Hot Springs as we thought we would. We just did the Blue Lagoon on the first day, so today we're starting the day at Vok Baths in the eastern part of the island. We've all heard of Blue Lagoon, but have you heard of Vok Baths? Yeah. Set. Go. 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 Let's go. There's floating infinity hot springs over the lake. I like to think of it as Blue Lagoon's underrated, less populated, and cheaper cousin. Into the Sorry. lake. Go. <laughs> you go. <laughs> go, I'll go. Daddy, I'm jumping. <laughs> Watch out for Daddy's passes. <laughs> that was so cold it burned. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. Boy? Hey. Nordic cultures are famous for saunas and steam rooms and they are everywhere. The best part about it for us was the fact that you could like sit in the hot pots and then when you're ready to take your cold plunge, which is very popular in Iceland, most of the hot springs have cold plunges, but they don't all have natural like lake cold plunges. At this one, you can literally jump from the hot pot directly into the cold lake Uriovatn. Alice always wants a snack. Going in the canyon. I can't pronounce anything, but this is supposed to be the canyon with those tall basalt columns. Something with an S. Stulagil Canyon. Waterfall. We're gonna be heading past Yeah, it looks beautiful. Mm. A geologic wonder that displays incredible basalt columnar jointing. Thanks, Scott, for teaching me that. That is what a waterfall is. That was the viewpoint side. Now we're on the hiking side. On the trail again. I think Daddy's peeing. Whoa, look at that. The hike took us about 45 minutes to get from the parking lot down to where the columnar jointing like meets the river. Stay close. Hold a hand. Hold a hand, boys. Don't touch me, I'm excited. I think this was probably Scott's favorite stop of the entire trip. To get down to the part where you see lots of photos in Stirlingville Canyon, you have to go on like a rope and go kind of shimmy down backwards. And yes, our kids did it, ages four and six. But the columnar jointing is kind of like a series of stairs, so that is helpful. Are driving the ring road this detour it's just a little bit off the ring road this is really worth it you really don't want to miss this this is one of those like really incredible sights to see in Iceland that's my Sam Coloradan born and bred <laughs> you are Coloradan baby ready how is it good <laughs> Apparently you can drink any of the wild water in Iceland. There's no Giardia in the country, apparently. A friend told us that before we came. I didn't really believe her, but some locals told Scott that while we've been here. Now I feel like I got some more reading to do, but definitely gonna try it. Nailed that hike. Get your snacks on. Make it look easy. From there, we continued our drive on the ring road till we hit our campground for the night. We're by Mehaven Lake, right, Isle? <laughs> Whatever this place is. This was what was open. <laughs> 
Day five, we're calling it in Lake Matvin here, um, somewhere between the east and the north. It's been really cozy, surprisingly warm, and it's a little loud with the wind, but other than that, we are totally comfortable up here. It's totally dark, so we never have to worry about the midnight sun keeping us up. It's like blackout curtains all around the tent. So anyways, good night, and we'll see you for day six. We woke up early on day six because we had a special excursion booked in Husavik, the whale capital of Iceland. Good morning, Husavik. One more town. This thing's reliable. I'm oh, look, Daddy's got pastry for you. Daddy, can I have a bite? Mm -hmm. Daddy can't resist a pastry in the morning. Now, Husavik is not on the ring road, it's a bit of a detour, but if you have the time to justify, I would say Husavik is a must visit, not only for families traveling with kids, but any traveler to Iceland. Husavik is a really, really cool place. For sure, get on a whale tour here if you can. There's tons of puffins in this area, and there's a whale museum. Just, it's, it's so quaint and charming. We booked a puffin and whale watching safari through Get Your Guide. Then go to the North Sailing, that was the actual like tour operator, North Sailing. We went to their front desk, grabbed our tickets, and got right on board the ship. 11 o'clock. The tour was awesome. We spotted a humpback whale. Yeah. Yeah. Woohoo! Wow! Almost right away. And these were the same kind of whales that we had witnessed on the opposite end of their migration pattern earlier this year in the Dominican Republic. It was really cool to see both ends of the migration pattern in one year. After we spotted the humpback whale, our tour boat took us over to what they call Puffin Island. Puffin! There were hundreds, if not thousands of puffins swirling in the air, nesting on the ledges of the puffin island, and then diving down from the sky into the water. Seeing puffins was a bucket list item for us in Iceland. We weren't sure where and how we were gonna see it, but this was definitely the right environment in which to see it. Wow. On the way back to Husavik on the boat, the guides had hot chocolate and Cinnabons for everyone. To be honest with you, I got seasick. I always get seasick on these trips. I would just really encourage you to plan in advance if you do get motion sickness. Yeah, keratin, right? We had a quick lunch and then we headed over to the Husavik Whale Museum. Husavik Whale Museum. Husavik Whale Museum did not disappoint. We learned today that blue whales are bigger than any dinosaur to have ever lived. Look at the size of that skeleton. Look how long the narwhal's horn is. Museum is a must stop for world schoolers, traveling families, even if you're not traveling with kids and you're just like really into ocean marine life. Um, highly, highly recommend the Husavik Whale Museum. Then it was time to get back down into the ring road and continue on our journey towards the capital of the north, but not without a quick roadside stop at Badafas Waterfall. It is cold, it's okay. Then we continued on and happened to see trees for the first time in a week because we were heading into Akureyri. Akureyri and we're looking for food and all the food options look amazing and everything has been so vegan friendly and we found a playground. I think we're gonna like this city. I hope we can stay here as long as possible. Kids had a chance to play at the playground for a little bit and then we headed out to set up camp for the night. Osa's campground in Akureyri is a little bit outside of town, so that was a bummer because it was just a little bit more driving than we wanted to do, maybe like an extra half an hour. But we set up camp for the night at Ijahadabsevet. That was a really hard one. Go! Oh, full mount. All right, restart. We took it a bit slower on day seven. Atlas is in the tree. Kylie is admiring his ability to get in the tree. So Scott was able to get a traditional Icelandic haircut. He gets a haircut in every country we visit, and he was really eager to get one. It was like $50 for his haircut, but it was part of the experience. He does it everywhere, so he had to get the haircut there. He and the kids were able to head over to the playground while he was doing that. Back to the park. A couple of locals highly suggested we visited the municipal swimming pool of San Blau. Pool experience here is very different. In the US they encourage everyone to shower before they get in the pool, but you don't really have to. Here they police it and make you take a shower before you get in. 
and you're all like you have to get under your swimsuit you have to get naked in front of others there's no option to shower privately and they're really strict about cameras out by the pool so i'm gonna put this away but i was excited to show it to you guys they have an awesome slide and tons of kid-friendly things here our wet little boys blob big bouncy blob things are everywhere in iceland even at the water park oh the boys are done there's a playground inside the pool, bouncy pads, chess, soccer. We ate at this falafel promo place yesterday and it was so good. We had to come back and get one more before we left town. It was also the cheapest meal we've eaten in this country and it's our favorite food, falafel. So we had to get one more round. Slendic hot dog. What a messy hot dog, but it's it so is good. so good. And, and when you heal them, they heal. They, they heal. You hear, you think the they make the sound of the water. Oh, oh they've yeah. been waiting for. How's it, Deb? Proper fuel. Going to Red Cross here in Ecuador, they try and find some wool sweaters secondhand. No, I, I, I don't like <laughs> You guys say talk? Didn't find the sweaters we were looking for at the Red Cross, but the kids got some super cute hats, so we'd call it a success. We finally hit the road and it was time to make a really tough call. We had to choose either to pursue the western fjords like we originally anticipated going upward, or to kind of cut left and head straight out to the Snaefilness Peninsula, effectively cutting out a ton of driving. Yay! I love your little hats. You look warm. We decided to forego the western fjords to save on drive time. It has just been a lot of driving and instead head straight to the west. We are on the Snaefels Peninsula just at the beginning and it is freaking incredible! And it was like a weight had been lifted. Like we had we had cut out so many hours for the next couple of days of driving that we knew we were gonna be able to just like take it slower after we had made that decision and there was definitely like a lighter mood after we did that. We made it to another town I can't pronounce, but we're on the Snaefels Peninsula. Skipped western fjords, but excited to be in this cute little fishing village. Fortunately, there was a restaurant open for us weary travelers late o'clock, late, late o'clock, late at night on this evening. Earlier in the country, we experienced everything shutting down by 8, and it's currently 8.45, and we were able to order food. Pretty excited about food, and happy to be done driving. Nice. The names here have been very difficult to say. We don't even try to say many. Can you say... That's one city. But it means... And we were confused why the names were so long. It means islands, mountains, and glaciers. It says it all in the name. And that's why there's such long names. That's correct. That's correct. <laughs> day eight, we woke up and we were excited to have a slow day just exploring the Snaefulness Peninsula. We didn't have a ton of ground to cover, but we had a lot of exciting stops. They were pretty close together, so that was a good feeling. I'm not going to share mine with you if you're not sharing yours with my, me. <laughs> How about you, Isle? I'll, I'll share mine with you. I thought you'd want to share. Mm. Oh, you want to share? No, I would just share with you. He's got jelly in his. Dad, I got nuts in mine. <laughs> cute little fishing village to continue our journey down the Snaefels Peninsula, but look how beautiful the harbor marina is in this fishing village. Although we skipped the western fjords, you can see them out there in the distance. Those are the western fjords across the bay. Look. Guys, look at this. We're in the lighthouse. Now let's back away. Back away. Back away. Isle's climbing up that lighthouse. Alice, you want to climb up there? All right, make a loop all the way around it. 
We started off the day walking up to the old lighthouse in this cute little sleepy fishing village and just took some photos and videos and hung out and took in the view of the harbor. The spot is really cool because you can see across the bay from the Snaefulness Peninsula to the Western Fjords. Although we didn't get to drive the Western Fjords, we saw them from across the bay and it was truly beautiful. Pocket some quartz from Chalcedony. It's microcrystalline quartz. That's a crystalline set oh. specimen. This is a microcrystalline specimen. You have to rest. <laughs> Today he has a wish. He has a wish. Oh, you have a wish? Big strong blow. Look at your wheat. What are you going to wish for with all that bouquet? Blow him. You missed it. Did any of them come off? Couple. Yeah. When we finally decided to hit the road, we were only driving for about 20 minutes before we made our first stop at the Shark Museum! <laughs> Shark Museum! Shark Museum! It's a really fun stop for families traveling with kids. That is the sharks, yes. So, so you take it to a speak, you take a yeah. piece of shark and you eat it with rye bread the first time, that makes it very easy, it's hold like on. a beginner's thing. Hold on, hold on, hold on. And then if you want a second time, you can try a shark with no bread, Icelandic style, yeah. uh, to feel the real flavor. So, <laughs> Hatnamara has been eating shark since she was six months old. So. You like shark? Yeah. Is it one of your favorite foods? Yeah. It is? Yeah. This is pretty crazy, you're gonna try it. Go on. You would like? Yeah, you smell, <laughs> you smell the ammonia. <laughs> Can't let them try it and me not try it. That's that's wrong. Oh, you boys. <laughs> 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 oh, Try dead. Your face. It smells worse than it tastes. This place only processes shark that is bycatch, meaning they don't intentionally go out and catch sharks, but sharks that are brought up in nets when fishermen are out there trying to catch something else. They call up this place, and this place goes and gets the shark and then processes it. It's a fun stop. It's not a very big museum. It's small. It shouldn't take you very long. The tours are super quick, but if you're traveling with kids, it's definitely worth stopping to see. It's a good cultural experience. We stopped for a quick lunch and then it was on to the next stop at the Kirkjufelfast waterfall. And then we arrived at the Buakirkja, the famous little black church. This was a cute place to stop, but there wasn't a lot going on other than just like taking a picture of the church and leaving. You couldn't go inside it or anything. It wasn't very exciting for our kids. If you don't have time for it, you could easily skip it. Our next stop was at Yitri Tanga to see the seals. There are some rules posted on signs about like how close you could get to them at this time of year. But we didn't get too close or get like too much up close footage of the seals, but we did see a ton of them out there and it was really cool besides like the stink factor. And not would have been a good idea here and just Iceland in general to see all the like distance waterfalls, wildlife, puffins, like reindeer, everything. Like if we had binoculars on this trip, we would have been golden. So before completing our circuit on the Snaefulness Peninsula, we had one last stop to make and that was at the Olke Duvatin Mineral Spring. Filling up our water bottles with natural mineral spring water on the Snaefels Peninsula. It's supposed to be good for people with liver and kidney disease. Effervescent. Red and beautiful down there. And it had a way higher mineral content than normal tap water. So although like the taste wasn't like on point, we drank as much as we could because we were like, oh, this is so healthy for me. And everything tastes better when you know how good it is for you. I would say this is stuff is a must if you're on the snake on this peninsula. Natural bubbly water. This came right out of the ground. Open that up and try it. And what you think? Right out of the ground it's bubbly water. Where? Oh, it's right over here at the this spring. Is it super bubbly? Yeah, a little bubbly. What do you think? <laughs> what's this stuff that got wet? That is, what, what stuff? You soaked 
eye with pants? <laughs> that's, oh. that's bubbly. Yeah, I washed his pants in the bubbly water. Oh. Check it out. Look at all the, uh, the red. See, that's iron that's coming out of this mineral spring. Mm -hmm. And they poured like concrete around it and got it the water source through this little tube with a um, spigot on the end. So it's under pressure. And that pressure is letting the carbon dioxide build up in the water. So it's escaping all the way around the seams of this, but a bunch of it is under pressure and it's being trapped into the water. Cool. I might go look at that. When we finally made it off the peninsula, we headed into the town of Borgarnes for the night. Found another park. We made it to Borgarnes. This town is called Borgarnes. Ending day eight in Borgarnes. Look at the sweet view on our campsite. Ocean front. What is that sound? Are those giggles in the bushes? What are you doing? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> Eat my dinner! <laughs> Got my headlamp. Morning, Borganis. Day nine. Look at how much the tide has changed since last night. Day nine was one of our best days on the island because we didn't have to drive too much, but we saw a ton. After waking up at our oceanfront campsite in Borgarnes, we grabbed some free coffee with our coupons from Go Campers at the N1 gas station, and then we went to the Loma Lind local market. We were finally able to find at least one of us an Icelandic tweed sweater. Atlas picked out his tweed sweater here. He was the first one out of the four of us to finally get one, and it wasn't till day nine, so we were cold until day nine, but he was not cold again after getting this. Icelandic horses, you can see. Ooh, hey horses. From there, we drove up to the Puerto Visiting Horse Farm. Look at their mouths. Do they have silly looking mouths? Gotta get closer, Atlas. <laughs> Horse Farm has an underground bakery. Whoa. Yeah, the water I brought in there is boiling. And then with the steam, the bread is getting so moist. And that's why the taste is so good. And yeah, we bake it inside of the milk cartons for 24 up to 36 hours. <laughs> This is the first place they use geothermal heat to keep their houses. I saw it on the sign, yeah, that's awesome. They have their own little personal geyser at this horse farm. And this horse farm was the first place in Europe to use geothermal heat to heat the house. So they used this hot spring water to not only bake their bread, but to heat the stables and the houses and the cafe, everything here. The underground bakery bread. It's good. Really good rye bread. The kids got to feed the horses, and if you're an animal lover or you're traveling with kids, definitely stop at the horse farm. A few minutes up the road from the horse farm is the Hafel Goat Farm. Watch out for goat poop aisle. Eating goats here to avoid the extinction of the Icelandic goats. inside their little shop afterwards and try some goat cheese and some goat ice cream which our kids loved and yeah this was a super cool stop we left this place thinking yeah we for sure need a pet goat like we don't have any pets but if we do get a pet it's got to be a goat <laughs> little, little piece just one atlas would you try one how is it i'll try it just a moment hold on After leaving the farms, we made a brief stop at Dil Dartung Hover Geothermal Area. It's wild how many geysers and like geothermal areas there are in this country. And now what's happening? Oh, did you feel the power of this little handprint? Our way back into town, we stumbled across this weird troll park thing and we had to stop and check it out. See if mom got it. What are we supposed to do? She's gonna try to pick that one up. Daddy just picked it up. Can't do it. That one's too heavy. 
<laughs> Ooh, this one's bigger. Go on, Atlas, you got it. Just pick it straight up. You can't roll it over your toes. There you go. Oh, maybe a smaller. <laughs> let's get a smaller rock for you. On the knees, no back. Man, it's hard to grab. <laughs> I want to walk. hurt myself on that one. Set. Pull. Pull. Troll tug of war. Come on, Atlas. Pull. Pull. <laughs> one leg. We headed back into Borgardis afterwards since it was the biggest town in the area. Another day, another pool. You guys have done a lot of swimming here. We were definitely the only travelers at the local pool in Borgardis, and we, we didn't see very many travelers at all in Borgardis. I mean, we ended up spending a second night here because of how convenient it was for the activities we wanted to do on the side of the island and because we got a sweet oceanfront campsite. Ending day nine at yet another playground. <laughs> Jump! <laughs> that's a wrap on day nine tonight is the first night we went back to a campsite and this campsite's nice and everything we had no problem getting a waterfront spot which is really cool um, but we didn't actually come back here because the campsite was awesome it was just a really nice location um, and made it accessible for everything we want to do today and everything we want to do tomorrow so we're here in Borgoners, Borgonis again and we're happy our man Roberto running the campground is super friendly. Good night unconventionalists, we'll see you for day 10. What's up unconventionalists? We're ready to start day 10. We've got a tour this morning. We're hustling to make it to the gas station for some coffee before we head up to our very exciting tour with Into the Glacier. We had a trip planned to go inside of the second biggest glacier in Iceland with Into the Glacier and we were so stoked. We accidentally got the meeting spot messed up so when we finally realized where we were supposed to be meeting the group for the tour, we were hustling, we were hauling up this like dirt road to get up to the base of the glacier. We made it and they waited for us. Thank you so much Into the Glacier. You guys were gracious and amazing. We got up to the meeting spot. They gave us some like gaiters, I think they're called, to cover up the spot between your pants and your shoes so you don't get the snow in there. They were very well prepared for us so that was nice and then we got inside this like monster mobile of a machine thing with like 16 or 18 tires. It was crazy, but it was made for driving up literal glaciers. And you drive in this machine up to the ice tunnel and it's crazy to like literally be driving like this on an actual glacier. Got our crampons on and headed down That's into the glacier. To the tunnel. Now, but because more snow is building on top of the glacier every year, the tunnel has extended. It's getting longer and longer every year. <laughs> we all got here crampons so he wouldn't fall, but they don't fit Isle's tiny feet, so he's walking without crampons. She's the toughest one. We learned firsthand about the effects of climate change in here and how quickly the glaciers are melting. No, with the movement of the glaciers. Oh, okay. It's been opening for two years because the glacier moves at different speeds in different parts. So the mountain underneath it has a little bit of a downward slope and that's why it's falling down on this one. This is also causing the two new crevasses to form. Miles got some cold toes. Cold toes! We highly recommend this experience for families with kids of all ages. The crampons didn't quite fit on our youngest, but he did just fine in there. And the kind of experience you have here is totally worth the like slight discomfort for the hour you're inside the glacier. Just got out of the tunnel on the Long Yukik Glacier. Crazy, we might never go inside of a glacier again. And there was so much movement in there. It was all the fear of being inside of a cave, except you know this one is enclosing it around you based on how much melt is falling on you. Kind of freaky, but really cool. I'll be sure to leave a link in the description as well for Into the Glacier. Mommy. Yeah. Do you know what Monsieur means? What? Kind of gas. Mister? No. Monsieur. <laughs> Monsieur means Sue and French. Thanks for teaching me. Quick waterfall stop on the side of the road. Mom, this is sick. Whoa, dude. Gnarly. Made it 
to Reykjavik. We're gonna camp here one night and then we're gonna move to a hotel for the last three nights. Reykjavik, Kyle! Can you believe it's our last night of camping? Pure Icelandic hand knitted wool. Went for food in town and we're very excited about all the options. It was kind of like arriving in Akureyri. When you finally get into like the big cities, you have all these restaurant options and it is very exciting. Yeah, it's and it's like, I would say Iceland is definitely a culinary experience. And we headed to Perlin Wonders of Iceland Museum. We just had that delicious dinner at Mama's and we we're gonna head back to our campground for the night, but we are returning our epic Jeep Wrangler to go campers tomorrow. So we're like, what should we do as long as we still have a rental car while we're in Reykjavik? So we came out to Pearl and Wonders of Iceland. It's not that far from town, but it's definitely not as nice of a walk as some of the other in-town activities. So we figured get this done with the Wrangler. It's just after 6 p.m. and we gotta get it all in by 10 p.m. Oh. The team of ice. <laughs> <laughs> you see the tiny hair like crystals there? Super, super tiny. Mesolite. Go on, Niall. Your next go. If you're in Reykjavik, for sure check out Perlin. It's a massive museum. There's a ton of stuff to learn about. There's a cool sky deck. had already done the ice tour into the glacier tour that day and then the Pearl and Wonders of Iceland Museum had like an exhibit for that for people who weren't able to actually go up to the glacier like didn't fit in their itinerary. There were definitely some things like when we got to the museum that we were like oh well, we saw the real thing already and no oh, we saw that real thing already so I mean it, it might not have been the best way to like end the trip but if you choose to do the trip uh, the reverse way and go clockwise and you start in Reykjavik Pearl would be a great place to like start and get hyped up for the rest of the trip up our camp for the last time in Reykjavik. Last night in the Jeep with the tent top. We can't recommend traveling like this enough in Iceland. It gave us so much flexibility and we really love the experience of it. Last morning in the campground, we gotta return this beast today. Starting the day at a park again with our N1 gas station coffee because when we start the day at the park, the kids just act better. I think they need to get the wiggles out and get their cups filled up before we start doing the day's activities. Breakfast at the park. Breakfast. To our hotel, and then we gotta return the Jeep. Last cruise to Reykjavik. A transition from a road trip to an airplane trip. We got an early check-in at our hotel, so we headed over there. We ended up staying at the downtown guest suites in Reykjavik, and it was the perfect location. We were right in the heart of all the restaurants. There was a playground across the street, and we couldn't have picked a better spot. And to be honest, we were excited to relax a little bit after being so go, go, go for the past 10 days of camping. This little apartment was so charming. It had two bedrooms and a full kitchen, so it was perfect for our little family. And it was so nice to be able to sprawl out a little bit after being so close together for the past few days. Got this super cool portable washing machine from Scrubba and it's kind of like a dry bag, but it's a wet bag because you put the soap in and it has an internal washboard and you scrub the clothes on it. And this is what the bathroom currently looks like as all of our clothing dries. 10 days of camping with two little kids equals a crap load of dirty laundry. We had to go get a converter. Atlas, did we secure the goods? Show me the goods. Atlas secured the goods. He had to go back and take the Jeep back, so we stayed at the hotel and did laundry. Now it's time to go find him and see how, how it went. Scott took the bus back to Reykjavik from the Keflavik airport after he dropped off the vehicle, and we met up for dinner and drinks downtown. The kids were having a blast doing sidewalk chalk, and Scott and I were just stoked to have so many food options. We were taking Kyle, full advantage. Good. Such a good job. You're trying so hard, buddy. Beautiful, Atlas. Go back to Mama's for a little more love. Day 12. Day 12 Iceland. Day 12 Iceland. Day 12 was off to a good start with a visit to the local playground right across the street from our hotel and a typical European style breakfast, coffee and croissants. Mm. How is it, Dad? <laughs> really, I mean, Stylin'. so good. Miss Irma, thank you so much for making these well, beautiful sweaters for thank us. Thank you for buying my beautiful sweaters for me. <laughs> What's your full name? Erla Norfjord. Oof. Yeah. That's hard to say. Yeah. We went to the Whale Museum in Husavik and now we're going to the Whales of Iceland Museum here in Reykjavik. 
<laughs> Whoa, look at that. So if you're not gonna make it to Husavik on your trip, for sure check out Wales of Iceland Museum in Reykjavik. However, if you are gonna go to Husavik, then you probably don't need to go to the second whale museum in Reykjavik. It's a little redundant and just not as well done. What did it, what'd you feel after watching that video? Sad. Well, I felt really sad too. I almost cried watching it. Blue whale. Which one's a blue whale? That one that you're in front of. How many steps does it take from nose to tail? Walked around the harbor for a bit, looking at the ship, spotted some jellyfish in the water, and even noticed some cool street art before heading over to the Icelandic lava show. Although the Agra Dal Sevajal volcano was actively erupting while we were in Iceland, we elected not to visit it because of the warnings we received from locals about the noxious gases and how they affect children at a higher rate than they affect adults. We were really bummed out because, of course, you know, everyone wants to see an active volcano. What a cool, like, bucket list. Trip. We prioritize the health of our kids. The Icelandic lava show is an awesome way to still feel the hype and the excitement of the volcanoes erupting in the area without having to like take that risk. So I can check this one again. It feels very flexible. 370 Celsius. Especially if you need something more accessible, if you're wheelchair bound or whatever, you have some issue with like standing or walking for a long period of time. The Icelandic lava show, they do have like real hot lava in there that you get to see. So it's really cool and um, we highly recommend it. Even if you do go see the volcano, like go to the volcano Icelandic lava show as well. It's it's really cool. And they have one in Reykjavik and in Vik. So whatever's more convenient for you on your trip. When we left the Icelandic lava show, our kids were begging for us to take them to the Saga Museum. Atlas had found a brochure for it on the ground and like really they wanted to go, saw the pictures and thought it was super cool. So we popped into the Saga Museum. Ah! Don't hurt your hands. Of course, and try to stab them. The chainmail would stop it. And it was very educational. It was a hit, great history lesson. I thought the museum was a little bit inappropriate for them, just the amount of violence. If your kids are older, it's probably just fine. And it's definitely, definitely very educational and it's a great stop. Um, but if you're traveling with little kids, you might think twice about visiting the Saga Museum. That looks comfy, you guys. We ended the day with some Icelandic soup in bread bowls. A key piece of advice for you, no matter where you're going in Iceland, is that if there is soup on the menu, order the soup. Okay. Looks totally normal. Cool. Yeah. Day 13. I got Alice's backpack. Day 13 in Iceland was our last full day to play in this country, so naturally we started the morning with coffee, croissants, and a game of backgammon. Okay. Croissants. European size cups. I know. We finally found Isle, an Icelandic tweed sweater at the local Red Cross. Shout out to Red Cross. Red Cross. Red Cross. Red Cross. Woohoo! We were already planning to come to the Harpa concert hall tonight for the 7 p.m. showing of How to Become Icelandic in 60 Minutes, but Dad saw a brochure somewhere that said there was traditional Icelandic music at noon today, so we came for an extra show, and hopefully the kids enjoy sitting through this one. Mommy, can I go to the play place? Yeah, go to the play place. Yeah. Oh, we put shoes in. Wait, do we need shoes? Take your shoes off. Our kids did a really good job in here for the most part. With that being said, it's not really catered to families with little kids. It was just kind of boring for the little kids. We enjoyed it. We enjoyed the cultural experience though. So if you don't have kids, maybe check out the show. Catch your Icelandic hot dogs. We bounced around a few food stops, of course. Yummy. How do we say thank you in Polish? Dziękuję. Dziękuję. How about in Icelandic? Uh, um, talk. Talk today. Talk yeah. today. Talk today. How about Vietnamese? Ooh, ooh, Ghana. Oh, Ghana. Nice. Spanish? Gracias. Do we have any other languages? French? Poland. French? Oh. That's where we're going next. You guys are going to get better at it, Mom. Merci. Look, you have ice cream right here. You have ice cream in this side. But the chocolate on the cone is like melting down. Got to lick quick. It's dripping here. Their imagination, like, 
We're trying to show us are not like all the same, like when the whole planet was was just this snowball. You're trying to show snow dog that was way before when when planet Earth was a snowball. Oh, you think this was from the last glacier? The, the big freezing, the big freeze of Earth. I think. And they this, made a boat. I think this is when like. The whole world was just one little snowball. And then we went to Halgrimskirkja, large Lutheran church that is kind of the classic view of Reykjavik. We had to come back to the church today to be able to go inside because the other day when we came it was closed down for a special event. So we had to go check it out. After a few more restaurants and cafes, it was time to head back to Harpa Concert Hall. I had booked tickets in advance for the show How to Become Icelandic in 60 Minutes. It's our last night in Iceland! Last night in Iceland! Last night in Iceland! How last many night in Iceland! How many french fries did we just eat? Too many french fries. Last night in Iceland, we had to see one last show, How to Become Icelandic in 60 Minutes. Right, Isle? Are you going to become Icelandic? Yes! <laughs> the show did not disappoint. It was super fun. It was comedy, culture, and so much more. I cannot recommend this show enough. A little bit of the dirty humor or the more adult-oriented humor just went over our kids' heads. They're four and six, so if your kids are a little bit older, the show might be slightly inappropriate for them. Also, did you know that Reykjavik has a penis museum? We did not go to the penis museum on this trip, but Atlas heard the comedian say penis museum during the show, and after that, for the next few weeks, every time he had the chance, he was yelling, Penis Museum! What'd you learn at the show? I learned to be Iceland and I learned How do you walk? To, and I learned this. to go to oh, a yes. penis museum oh, and what's the slogan to mean? eat bowls. Shh. Lamb bowls, sheep bowls with <laughs> milk and settle them for months and weeks. And then I eat them and I'm like, mmm, yummy chicken nuggets. What does, that's what does it mean? What does it mean? Things will work that's out. That's Things will work out. The Icelandic that's response that's to everything. Well, it's not Bjork, it's that's Bjork. Bjork. It was a great show. It was a great ending that's to our last that's night that's in Iceland. Breakfast in Iceland. Can you believe it? I literally said you're not allowed to Last morning in Iceland, we're getting ready to pack up and check out a downtown guest house here in Reykjavik. But I had to go and get a souvenir. I don't really get many souvenirs on trips. I did get this sweater here and I got some Icelandic black lava salt as well as some wild blend herbs which has Icelandic thyme, Icelandic moss, and Ar no, Arctic thyme moss, Icelandic moss, and birch, which is uh, what's common here, I guess. I'm interested to try those out when we get back home. Let's go pack up and get ready to go to France. Iceland has truly been one of the most special destinations that our family has ever had the privilege of exploring. From the nature, to the food, to the culture, Iceland is more than a destination, and it should be on every traveler's bucket list. There are also endless world schooling opportunities here. In just our two weeks, we were able to learn about earth science, Icelandic culture and history, geology, geothermal energy, animal migration patterns, zoology, marine biology, environmentalism, plate tectonics, glaciers, volcanoes, and so much more. I'll be leaving the links in the description for the Jeep rental, the hotel, and all the excursions we did here. That's it for today on Conventionalist. Don't forget to subscribe because in our next video, we are headed into mainland Europe where we're going to be exploring France for the next three weeks. Also, check us out on Instagram. We detailed this trip fully with daily vlogs and detailed information on all of our favorite excursions. If you are a world school family, be sure to check out the World Schooling map linked below that offers educational travel opportunities all over the world. Until next time on Conventionalist, keep exploring life outside the box.